everyone, it's Melissa. I go by Stitching List here on YouTube and also over on Instagram. It would mean so much to me if you would follow me in both places. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you're new. Today what we're doing is six changes I made to enjoy cross-stitching more. So you may feel like your cross-stitching um, just doesn't have the spark that it once had. And these are some suggestions of what I did to make my cross stitching more enjoyable for me. And it might inspire you to make some changes to help make your cross stitching more enjoyable. And it's always great if we can make our hobby more enjoyable. So the first thing we're gonna start with is, <clears throat> I started using hoops I love. So I, don't stitch in hand um, and I don't have a scroll frame or a stand of any kind. I like to stitch holding a hoop and for the longest time I tried stitching with Q-snaps. Everybody talks about Q-snaps. People love Q-snaps and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't enjoying my stitching. And then it occurred to me that when I stitch in a hoop, I seem to enjoy it more than when I use the Q-snap. So I decided to try stitching in a hoop exclusively. And this is the hoop that I love best. This is no longer available for sale, which is really sad. I had gotten this from Michael's. What I like about this hoop is the size. It's a six inch and it has a ridge on the inside. And that ridge holds the fabric nice and taut. So it snaps on, it holds the fabric nice and taut and it's light, it's not bulky it's really easy to use. You can get around the back nice and easy. I don't like anything super big and I felt like cute snaps were super big. And um, so I was so disappointed that I couldn't get more of these, but I did try the Nerd Hoop. And the Nerd Hoop is very similar. It has a ridge on the inside and um, the size you can get multiple sizes of it. This again, I believe is the six inch. They don't go by inches. Um, this is 145 millimeters and 165 millimeters. Um, so it's about six inches. Again, these are nice and light to hold when you get the smaller ones. They have the ridge to hold the fabric taut. It's a great new um, addition to my collection. When I can't use this, I use this. And switching from Q-snaps to hoops that I love made my stitching easier. It made it more enjoyable. It made me like stitching better. And it made my projects more, I didn't dread working on my projects. So, um, if you haven't tried using a different frame, or if you haven't tried stitching in hand, or if you haven't tried a scroll frame, or a lap stand, or a floor stand, try something different. If you're not totally enjoying what you're doing, see if trying to change your frame or your method of how you hold your fabric would change how you feel about your stitching. It totally changed mine. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that I found a needle that I love. Originally, I started doing cross-stitching with kits, and so you know the needles that come with kits are kind of um, dull and big and um, not the best quality. And I started watching false tube and I heard about all these other kinds of needles that were available. So I tried Bowen's and I tried, um, is it Pat's favorite? 
um, the one with the gold eye. Um, and I, I just, there was always something about it that just didn't feel right. So suddenly I heard somebody mention Peacemakers. And I tried them and they are the perfect needle for me. I like the size 24 because I usually stitch on 16 count Ada and it works perfectly for that. They are just the right amount of sharpness. They are just the right amount of thickness. They are easy to thread. They work really well to bury your thread on the back of your work when you're done with your thread. <clears throat> They get underneath the stitches really easily. Um, these are my favorite needles and it totally changed my stitching experience to have a needle that I love. So I would suggest if you haven't tried different needles and you're just not satisfied with what you've got, try some different ones. Go on 123 Stitch, go on Amazon, Go on any of your local stores and buy a couple of different kinds of needles and test them out. Find what you like and you'll notice a big difference in your stitching experience. The next thing I did to change my stitching to enjoy it more was I stopped railroading stitches. Very early on in my stitching experience, I learned to railroad stitches to make them neater. If you're not familiar with railroading, it's when you're using two strands of thread to stitch and you use your needle to break apart the two threads as you go down through them and um, separate them so that they lay flatter. At least that's the theory. And you can do it on the, um, bottom leg or the top leg or just the top leg, it's up to you. I used to do it just on the top leg and it took me a long time to learn how to get into the habit of railroading. And I did it for years, many years. Then one time last year, I stitched a project on 20 count Ada and I needed to only use one strand of floss to stitch that project. So I couldn't railroad, it was one thread. And I was like, wow, I like this so much better. So I was like, do I just like stitching smaller stitches? Do I just like stitching one strand? What do I like better about this? And I realized it was that I could just go up and down and up and down and up and down. And I was moving faster and I wasn't worrying about anything with the way my stitches laid. So I decided to try, when I went back to stitching with two threads on my next project, I decided to try not railroading. And it changed my whole stitching experience. Not railroading made absolutely no difference in the way my stitches look. They are not twisted, they are not scrunched up, they are just as flat as when I railroaded. And at least in my opinion. And the stitching is so much faster. The stitching is so much more enjoyable. There's no stress. There's no worry. There's no <sighs> tediousness about the stitching. It's just up and down, up and down and it's therapeutic and it's enjoyable. It totally changed the way I felt about my stitching. I didn't realize how much railroading was affecting the way I felt about my stitches, but I'm so glad that I did and that I changed it. So um, the next thing that I changed was that I started to stitch from stash. Over the years, when I first started stitching, I would kit up a project with the called for thread specifically. I might not use the called for fabric because I like to stitch on Ada and often the called for fabric was a linen or even weave, but 
the threads, I would get the called for threads. And I ended up with huge piles of DMC. And I started out by bobbinating the DMC, but I did not like bobbinating at all. So I just had a bunch of skeins laying around in a huge pile. I decided to organize them by color. And in the meantime, I had developed a pretty big stash of the fabric that I love, which is 16 count Ada. That's my favorite. In multiple colors, in neutrals. And what I'm able to do now is take a chart and I look at the colors on the cover of the chart and I take my colors out of my DMC box and I match up as closely as I can to the color on the cover of the chart based on what I have available to me in my stash. And then I do a floss toss on fabric that I have available to me and I pick a fabric. So I match colors and I pick fabric. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close to what the cover looks like. And I'm happy with it. And it has totally changed my experience of stitching. The first thing is that you don't have to wait to start a project. And you don't have to kit it up way in advance. You can start a project when you want to start it. When you're, you know, in the mood to start it, you can start it. And it makes me feel more creative. I feel like I am a full participant in making this chart come to life by picking the colors that work for me that are in my stash and choosing a fabric that I like to go with it. I feel so creative and so engaged in the process. The other thing is that I'm saving money. By using what I already have in my stash, I don't have to buy anything new. And so I'm saving money every time I kit up a project. Um, I find it so much more enjoyable to kit up from stash. It feels like It feels like an artistic adventure. I really enjoy it. And I think if you haven't tried it, you should definitely try it. Don't be afraid to do something wrong. You can't go wrong with cross stitching. You can only do what makes you happy. And all you have to do for the colors is get close. You don't have to have the exact right color, just get close and you'll have a very good project and nobody will know the difference. Okay, so the next thing I did to change my experience of stitching was I stopped doing sows, especially mystery or monthly sows. So sows are definitely a fun way to get involved in the cross stitch community. And I tried some early on in my cross stitch journey but what I found is that I don't have a lot of time to stitch. And a lot of the sows that I have tried take time to do if they're monthly. And I would be spending a lot of time just doing the sow and not getting to other things that I wanted to stitch. So I was spending a lot of time on the sow. The other thing is that when it was a mystery, even if I had a sneak peek, I would often find that, oh, this wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, and now I don't think I really like it, and I had either had to give it up, or I had to continue on because I didn't wanna stop and give up. So, when you don't know what you're going to stitch, it makes it a lot harder to know if you're gonna like it. I also felt a lot of pressure with sales 
to keep up with them, to keep up with the group, to not become a failure and fall behind. Um, I ended up with unfinished cells that were just sitting there that once the excitement of joining in the cell was over, I had just a project that was unfinished sitting there. So I think for me, and if it is true for you too, the excitement of joining in is what makes sales so enticing. But the reality of sales is that they may not be what you want them to be. And they can take up a lot of your time and make you feel pressure. So if you're finding sales don't work for you, feel free to give them up. You can find other ways to participate in the cross-stitch community that will be just as satisfying. And the last thing I wanna talk about that I changed to enjoy my cross-stitching more was that I started mood stitching. So what does that mean? Kind of what it sounds like. I stitch according to my mood. I don't stitch what I don't wanna stitch. I don't stitch when I don't want to stitch. I stitch what I feel like stitching when I feel like stitching it. If I want to do a new start, I do a new start. If I want to work on a whip, I work on a whip. If there's a particular whip I want to work on, I work on that whip. I do not let myself feel obligated to do anything in my cross stitch practice. I want to get to meet myself where I am at with this hobby. I don't want to feel pressure. I don't want to feel like it's not fun. I don't want to feel like I'm doing something out of obligation. Just because I started it, just because somebody else hasn't seen progress on it on Instagram, whatever reason you feel stitching is not calling to you, don't go with what doesn't call to you. Go with what you feel like doing in your guts, in your soul. Do what you want to do. This hobby is about enjoyment. This hobby is about fun. It shouldn't feel like a drag. It should feel great. You should look forward to it. And if you're not, evaluate why. Is it because you're not stitching what you wanna stitch? Even with gifts, I have stopped giving gifts that are time bound or expected. So I still stitch kits stitch gifts occasionally, but the person doesn't know they're coming and they're not attached to a particular holiday or date. So I can work on them whenever I want to work on them. I can mood stitch the gift. So these are six things that I changed to enjoy my stitching more. I hope that they've inspired you to look at your stitching. And if it's not as satisfying to you as you want it to be, if you feel like you could get more from your stitching, I hope you consider some of these changes and look at what you can change on your own to make your stitching more enjoyable for you because that's what it should be, a joy. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye-bye.